what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. There are many bad presidents and vice presidents in companies today, especially in advertising, whose only loyalty is to whatever's trending this week. With intentionally vague buzzwords, they appeal to certain demographics in order to get these demographics to see themselves as collective. Not because they share talent or an interest, but because they share the same innate characteristics. A collective is much easier for advertisers and politicians who think and act like advertisers to control. Thinking as a collective creates a common enemy. A perceived common enemy makes the brand or product relevant, and when it's made relevant, it generates money, which is the whole idea. Because in reality, it's never about the ideology. Ultimately, it's about the money and power. In reality, there is no enemy, as the companies have programmed them to do. The targeted demographics are fighting a figment of their own imagination, which means that they're actually fighting themselves, or fighting something within themselves. Elisa came up with the idea of Bud Light's debated campaign. Let's watch her superficial reasoning, if we can call it that, for evolving, so-called, the Bud Light brand. Yeah, I do want to talk about that because I think, you know, it was amazing to see a woman at the heart of the Bud Light Super Bowl commercial. And I think there's yeah. probably a lot of ways that, you know, your own background and your own perspective and your own values, you know, the person you are at home impacts and has a ripple effect on the Bud Light brand. Tell me about that a little bit. Already here, the premise is skewed. There's an intentional misconception today that the overused term diversity can only refer to people born with different innate characteristics. But that's not true. People can have very diverse opinions for all sorts of reasons. Opinions that are very different from the opinions of other people who look like them. In theory, a director like James Cameron is just as likely to make a movie that women want to go see than, say, Kathy Yan, who directed Harlequin, Birds of Prey, to name one of thousands of examples. Thus, the intentionally one-sided definition of diversity is revealed for what it is. A way of climbing the ladder by appealing to outer characteristics rather than inner characteristics, talents and merits. And again, it's a way for advertisers to get the given demographic to think that they're all the same, and thus, that they should think the same as well. Which is actually the opposite of diversity. But I guess we shouldn't let a detail like that get in the way. The interviewer doesn't use the word inclusive, but it's presupposed in her praise of Elisa, simply because of Elisa's innate characteristics. You know, it was amazing to see a woman at the heart of the Bud Light. Otherwise, she wouldn't need to mention it. And as the conversation develops, this presupposition becomes more and more obvious. Yeah, I, I think number one, you know, I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. Alyssa doesn't seem to be entirely comfortable to use another overused word with this question. She looks away and pauses by taking a deep breath in. Interjections like um and taking deep breaths in are a way of either keeping the turn or showing the other speaker that you're about to speak. The acknowledgement token yeah. registers the question in an over-enthusiastic and thus overcompensating way. Then she makes a self-repair with the repetition of the personal pronoun, I. I, I. Obviously, there's something about the way this question is framed that interferes with the answers she had prepared beforehand. She then goes on to needlessly establish her status. You know, I'm a businesswoman. Using the term, you know, which appeals to shared knowledge. Well, not needlessly in her view, because she uses it to establish authority, a perceived authority. And with its more official tone, it sounds like a part of the answer she had prepared. So does the rest of this part of her answer. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. Which has little or nothing to do with how the question was phrased. You know, the person you are at home impacts and has a ripple effect on the Bud Light brand. Tell me about that a little bit. 
This is one more indication of the misalignment between question and preparation. And my what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what is what do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Mm -hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. Her overly eager gesticulations and intense stare could be mistaken for her having anything to say. Oftentimes, excessive body language is used as overcompensation. It takes the focus away from the little certain people have to say and puts the focus on the energy and vibe instead. I can't tell you how much I appreciate these terms. Come to think of it, I should have had a different intro with a different energy and vibe to it. Wow, welcome back. It's so amazing to be here again. I have the coolest video today. You're not going to believe it. It's so real and authentic, and I really and truly think that it's going to be an empowering message for the entire world. When she says what she allegedly believes in, she makes a telling self-repair, indicating hesitation before she finds comfort in the buzzword inclusivity. Was a belief in... Okay, what does it mean inclusivity? A virtue signaling term that advertisers and politicians, to be redundant, say to sound morally superior. She says it as if it's self-explanatory, even though it isn't. And thus, this answer is as empty as the plot in a She-Hulk episode. Also, she demonstrates a fundamentally flawed way of thinking in terms of branding, which is strange considering her position in this company, or whatever's left of it. Because inclusivity isn't a goal in itself. In a perfume commercial, no one expects or wants to see a man. Or at least that's how it used to be until advertisers, politicians and college professors started seeing financial and career advancing incentives in making people look at it differently. Contrary to history, science and logic. But that's all fine, I guess. She also doesn't define the adjectives lighter and brighter inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and both words are subjective completely dependent on each individual's random definition Alyssa's repetitions of buzzwords like inclusivity and representation and excessive hand gestures overcompensate for the lack of content in her empowering statements Alyssa says you gotta see people who reflect you as if audiences only feel included or reflected if they see and hear someone who looks like them which actually indicates how she devalues the audience by trying to get them to see the world in this extremely one-dimensional way. Again, people are capable of identifying themselves with people that look different from them. And movie flop after movie flop has shown that catering to certain demographics doesn't necessarily or ever make these demographics like the characters or the movie any better. It's interesting how the people who will deny biology in some areas are the very same people who will promote biology in other areas when it's convenient and popular. Some people might claim that that's because they're emotional thinkers as opposed to logical thinkers, but that's being too nice because first and foremost it shows that they're being dishonest. They don't care about the inherent contradictions in their worldview because they don't care about truth. To them, it's about being seen by people, and it's all about the money and power. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out-of-touch humor, and it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach. So She repeats the hedge, kind of, twice, along with vowel lengthenings that reduce her speech rate. Kind of, kind of brand of... Friday. This shows that she doesn't have anything specific to say about this either. And she doesn't have any appreciation of the company, which isn't a very good starting point for someone in her position. The hesitation also suggests that she wants to get to all the empowering buzzwords and slogans fast. That's why the so is there to introduce a new topic and simultaneously keep her turn at talk. Long story short, Super Bowl spot, fast forward, 
I cast an incredible female choreographer who just brought incredibly positive, amazing energy to the spot. We cast Miles Teller and his wife, Kelly Teller, but it was really crucial to me that if you see that spot, Kelly is, Kelly is the heartbeat of that spot. You're seeing this whole experience through Kelly. She's the beating heart. She, I would sort of argue, is sort of what propels you through that experience. And, and that was intentional. Incredibly positive, amazing energy. What an incredibly specific praise. That sounds even more convincing because it's so amazingly redundant. The conjunction but famously minimizes and negates that which preceded it. Here, Alyssa uses it right after she's mentioned Miles and Kelly Teller, initiating a contrast and thus making it sound like she has to apologize for bringing a man to the set. We cast Miles Teller and his wife Kelly Teller, but it was really crucial to Because she goes on to say how crucial it was that Kelly was the heartbeat of the spot. That's what her ideology, or what she pretends her ideology is, commands her to do. And with the self-repair, but it was really crucial to me that if you see that spot... This emphasis on Kelly doesn't seem genuine, but contrived. It's a self-repair because of the different tenses. She says, But it was really crucial to me that... And then shifts to present tense. Kelly is the heartbeat of that spot. Thus, the conditional clause... If you see that spot... Initiates a new sentence, a new line of thinking, so to speak. There's another self-repair... Kelly is, Kelly is indicating hesitation and thus further pointing to the disingenuous nature of her statements. That this is something she has to say in order to stay loyal to her presumed ideology and in-group. And again, we see the kind of exclusive inclusivity that Alyssa and like-minded people really stand for. As if it's self-evident that the gender of the choreographer she hired is the only important thing to mention. Nothing specific about her talent or style. The adjective female is all she thinks she needs to say, which speaks volumes about the presuppositions within the group Eliza wants to appeal and belong to. Presuppositions that are never challenged because they can't stand scrutiny. And presuppositions you aren't allowed to challenge without being called insensitive and old-fashioned, even though ad hominems like these have nothing to do with the issue. Um, and then we had another really fun spot. First spot out of the gate was the first time ever we'd had a female protagonist in this really cool, she was sort of cool as hell bobbing and weaving through a bar. But anyway, listen, I'm not going to pretend that there isn't so much more work to do from a business results perspective. And of course, from a representation perspective, but I feel like you, you have to put your money where your mouth is when you're trying to evolve a brand and elevate it and bring in new consumers. So that's been incredibly important to me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, listen, I'm not going to pretend that... Funny how the word pretend is on her mind when pretending is exactly what she's appeared to do in this interview. But as long as she uses the right buzzwords and platitudes... Female protagonist, a representation perspective, to evolve a brand and elevate it and... I guess it's all just incredible, amazing and positive. Amazing. She says she feels like you have to put your money where your mouth is. Which is funny, considering that we haven't heard convincing arguments about where her mouth actually is. We know she wants money, though. That's not the part she needs to emphasize. Alyssa's ideology is everywhere. On college campuses, in workplaces, and in the media. And it reveals more than just an exclusive in-group bias, masked as inclusivity. It exposes a society that's focused on how people look, and more importantly, how they don't look. A society focused on these issues is a society that has long since abandoned logic. A society that's running out of ideas and is willfully forgetting the ideas that made it great to begin with. People's talents and merits should be our only focus, no matter what we happen to look like. Like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for tuning in.